Hello, I am Peggy O'Neill, and I'm so glad to be here with you today, whether you're here in person right now or watching this on replay. If you're watching this on replay, please put in hashtag replay, and I'll say hi to you then later. And if you're watching live, please uh, say hi or put in hashtag live, and I will be watching the comments as well. Also, anytime you have any questions or comments, post them. If we're live, I'll answer them while we're together. And if we're uh, not live, then I'll answer them uh, soon, soon, soon after you post them. Again, welcome. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I am the host of Answering the Call. And in, um, in the group, as well as each of these uh, uh, live sessions, what we're doing is answering the call in two ways. We're answering the call a sense of there's something more to life, I know it. Or maybe we're longing for happiness, love, fulfillment, peace, some sort of longing in our life. So any of those longings are actually an invitation from our essential nature to return to our essential nature. So we're always working with that dynamic. And then we're also working with, once we know our essential nature, which is consciousness, source, spirit, God's infinite being is the religious name, the universe, whatever name you call for the one being that we are, that once we know that and we're living in alignment with that, then we also want to know what it is that's my unique expression of this one being. So we're always doing both of those here and answering the call, and I'm happy that you are with us today. Hey, Sharon, Sue, so glad to see both of you here. Glad you made it, Sharon. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. So today we're gonna to talk about without changing anything, everything changes. Without changing anything, everything changes. So what do I mean by that? We're gonna explore it in more detail here in a minute. But um, but once we change perspective, once we have a new understanding of something, and by understanding, I don't mean intellectual understanding, but I mean a knowing, an understanding that's lived in our body, in our being, then everything changes because we see the world differently. We can engage with it differently. So, for example, when, um, when the, it was discovered that the world wasn't flat and was, in fact, round, everything changed for people. Different possibilities were then available for people. So, so that's the sort of thing we're talking about here. And I'm using the consciousness only model because that's uh, as far as the, the counterpart to the round world flat earth. Now what we're understanding, science is aligned with this. Wisdom teachings and teachers have been telling us this for several thousand years that all there is, is consciousness. That's the consciousness only model. Everything arises out of, is made out of, and expresses consciousness. Again, other names for that are awareness, source, spirit, um, infinite potential, infinite possibility, the universe. That that's all there is is consciousness or awareness. I use those most interchangeably in a conversation like this. And, and that's new to us. I mean, some people might have talked about it or have some concepts about one being, but, but what science is really trying to help us to embrace as reality, because everything I say here is reality, that it's reality, that everything is consciousness everything is made out of and expresses the same stuff the same stuff all right so let's look so if we're if it's all consciousness there's only consciousness then we're one being right so one of the things i said we do today is deepen our ability to experience the oneness that we are so how can we do that and i'm going to invite you to do this right now one thing is is to if everything is consciousness, which it is, then just look at something in your room, and you can look at me if you want to, or you can look at something in your room, which might be easier to do. So look at something, some object, a door, a wall. Look, look at it. And allow yourself to you know, bring the thought to you, 
wait, that's made out of consciousness. That's consciousness, just like I'm consciousness. And let it sink in instead of just glancing at it. Oh, that's con. Let it sink in. Oh, wait, that's consciousness too. And it takes a while. I mean, the first time we do this, then it's like, okay. But if we really want to embrace this understanding, which again is reality, then we want to stick with it. We've just been conditioned to believe that we're separate, that the wall's separate, that the wall's made out of concrete. Well, or whatever it is, <laughs> sheetrock, probably, probably not concrete. <laughs> I'm on the third floor of an apartment building. It's probably not concrete, but sheetrock. So, um, so, and so the sheetrock is made of consciousness. Yes, it's made of consciousness. So to let that sink in, oh, that's the same stuff as me. So it can take a while. And another thing to do, which I've offered a lot on the, these sessions, but we can spend a few seconds doing that again right now, is to let it sink in that there's no separation. You're hearing me right now, and if someone walked in the room and said, oh, where's the sound coming from? You'd probably point over there. But if they asked themselves, and if you asked yourself, but wait, where am I hearing this sound? We'd all acknowledge I'm hearing it here. I'm not hearing it out of the computer. I hear it here. We can do the same thing with seeing, touching, tasting, smelling. I think that's it. All of the senses. And then we just keep doing that and keep doing that till it becomes more and more real and we feel the oneness. I do this all the time. I walk almost every day. So I bring that to my attention. Not every day. Sometimes I don't think about it. But, as, but many days I'll remind myself as I look at a tree, the sidewalk, another person, remind myself, oh, they are me. We're made of the same stuff. Until you can start, you're really, mm, I don't know if this is the right word, but you're kind of reconfiguring your energy, your, your whole belief system. So your energy, your emotions, your thoughts, to really let that be the reality that well, I'm one with everything. They're one with me. There's no separation. So that would be a couple of ways Oh, and then, and then as part of that, another, another way to think about this that can help with embracing this and deepening the oneness is think, you can think about it this way. So if we were looking at the ocean and waves coming out of the ocean, but we were looking, let's say out of a camera, where all we saw as we were looking out were the tips of the ocean. And we'd see a tip, I mean, of a wave. We'd see a tip of a wave over here, tip of a wave over here. And if that's the only perspective we had, we'd go, oh, there's a thing of water over there and a thing of water over there. Oh, that's interesting. But then if we widen the lens or step back in some way with a different perspective, we see, oh, wait, those are tips of a wave of different waves and when they go all the way down, back down they go there's one body of water that they all are they're just unique expressions of this body of water so that's what we're talking about here we're unique expressions we're like waves in the ocean but if we look deeper and check in with our own experience and ask ourselves to examine our real experience then we realize oh there's no separation, just like the ocean. Unique waves out of the ocean, but you look look more fully, more deeply, more a wider perspective. We see oh, well, it's one body of water. So that's a way to deepen your ability to experience the oneness that we are. Now, number two on today, without changing anything, everything changes. Everything can cha everything can change without changing anything. So it's kind of the title in another way. And I offered a couple of ideas uh, as we started this, but think about it this way. If you had been your whole life wearing green glasses and somehow they were just stuck to your head and you never realized you had on green, gla I mean, uh, uh, glasses with green lenses and one day you took them off, you go, oh, wow, I didn't know the world was like this. Wow, a whole, something entirely do new, different. You just never knew it or saw it before because 
what what you've been living with was a coloring of what's there that was artificial and not what's real. So that's why everything changes when nothing changes. So embracing the consciousness only model, nothing actually changes, but a new perspective of, oh, this is how the world actually is. And then um, another way is to think about it this way. If we've lived our whole lives in this huge castle, maybe it's a beautiful castle, lots of rooms to explore, doors, little areas, and it's pretty, and maybe it has lots of plants in one room, and so on. This is great, and we've been told there's, this is it. But then one day, you run across a door that you've never opened before and actually never noticed before, and you open it and step outside, and you realize, oh, wow, look at this. There's a sky, there are forests, there are on and on. And so that's the same sort of thing. We've just never known this before. It's like a door has opened to the reality that's actually there. We've just been conditioned to believe we lived inside a castle. We've been conditioned to believe that we live in a world of separation of matter and energy that are separate. Not true. We are actually one with everything. Uh, and so nothing changed, right? And yet, all of a sudden, everything's different. All new possibilities, new ways of seeing people, um, ourselves, what's possible. Everything's different, and I didn't have to change anything except to open to a new perspective. So I guess that could be changed, but I don't have to do anything to change anything. Just open to, wow, this is how it really is. And that's why, if you've seen me on any workshops uh, where I talk about this, and I have one coming up that I'll tell you about in a minute, um, that's why when I, once I discovered the direct path to our essential nature, I was so excited. We don't have to do anything, <laughs> really, to know our essential nature. Yes, ask a couple of questions, engage in a couple of uh, uh, concepts till we can relate to them in a certain way, but we already are the happiness the fulfillment, the possibility that we are. We don't have to spend years and years and years on a progressive path to get there. We're already there. So, um, so that's what I'm talking about today too. It's a direct path. We're already there. And then we just, we, yes, we might have to remove some things that hide ourselves from ourselves, like find the door to get out of the castle, but we don't really change anything. All right, and then the last thing I said we'd talk about is how that your relationships, money, organizations can all be different with embracing the consciousness only model. So imagine someone you care about. You can bring to mind somebody you care about, a friend, a colleague, a child, a parent, somebody you care about, and then think about, oh, if we're all one, if we're both waves in the same ocean, if we're one can, uh, you know, intimately connected being, they're my liver, I'm their heart. Something can change immediately. And I invite you to start with people that you're getting along with well. It can be hard to do that at the very beginning with someone you're not getting along with very well. But with someone we get along with pretty well, and then we realize that, oh wow, all of a sudden everything changes. We're connected. They're my little finger. I'm their heart. Okay, that's different without changing anything except a perspective and understanding of oneness. Um, and and off what I've found, I don't even have to, see that's the point, I don't even have to try to be different. Once I remind myself, I might have to remind myself a few times of this, but when I remember somebody I'm talking with is another aspect of me, just how I want to be with them is different. Just It's just a shift because the reality has shifted about who they are and who I am and who we are for each other. With money, who, again, everything is consciousness. That means money is consciousness. I'm consciousness. You're consciousness. We're all consciousness. And what is consciousness? Consciousness is an infinite being. Now, our thoughts, our thinking mind cannot understand infinite. So this is something more that we, we want to sense because who we truly are knows this. 
but our thoughts cannot understand or grasp infinite. So it's a sort of um, a sensing into the infinite nature that we are. So in that moment of realizing, oh, I'm, I'm an infinite being, I'm one with consciousness, really everything is possible, anything is possible. So my relationship with money, finances can change immediately because the universe, by definition, if it's infinite, is abundant. <laughs> Everything that could ever be is ever possible. It's already existing. So our relationship with money can change just in a second by realizing, oh, I'm abundant. I am all of it. Let's see. And so, I mean, there can't be scarcity. There can't be lack. lack. So, I, But we might experience that. So yes, there still might be some uh, letting go of beliefs and emotional patterns, uh, but my relationship with money can just change in a nanosecond once I realized, wow, any, you know, I'm only keeping money away from me, really. If it would be one way to look at uh, money if I'm, um, if I didn't have a lot of money. If I had a whole lot of money, another way might be, oh, wow. I'm holding on to all this money, and yet I'm one with all, all of this. Why wouldn't I want to move that energy and share it with my being? And then with organizations, um, if, if we're one being uh, in the organization, you almost think about it like a stew. I don't know if this is the best. You can tell me if this is a very good analogy. But uh, in organizations, it could be like a stew. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the onions infuse um, a flavor into the potatoes and the carrots. And so it's one stew. So we're all um, uh, exchanging information, energy. Uh, we flavor each other. We, um, we impact each other. And so immediately too within organizations and then back to the infinite nature of the universe and possibilities, whole other relationship with what's possible and, and what the organization can, the people in the organization can bring in the world and do with the organization can change in an instant too. Also realizing that, oh, we're connected. We are everything in the universe, not just this separate organization. But within the organization, it's more what I was thinking of, that we are sharing information already. And now if we're aware that we're one being, we might share information differently be more open, be more generous with sharing information. So those are my thoughts today. So with, without changing anything, everything changes. We explored uh, how to deepen our ability to experience the oneness we are, that everything can change without changing anything, really, because we just have a whole new understanding of who we are and everything else is. And then that our relationship with money, relationships, organizations can be different by embracing the consciousness only model. Are there any questions, thoughts, comments from, uh, from those live? And again, on replay, please post anything. And while I'm seeing if there are any questions, I said I'd come back to this in a minute. So I am hosting again a, a free workshop, free workshop, Direct Path to Happiness. May the 31st through June the 4th. It's one hour a day at 1 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Eastern, um, Tuesday through Saturday. And then there will also be a 2 o'clock Eastern extra session that won't be recorded. All the other sessions, the first five, the five sessions will be recorded, so replays are available. And then the, the last hour, the, the 2 to 3 Eastern time on the 4th, is just a pure unrecorded session for uh, more like guidance, kind of coaching, kind of support for anything personal that somebody might want, not want to be recorded. And again, replays are available. I will put the link to register for the workshop uh, below this video, and I hope you'll join join us for this workshop. Uh, there's a notebook, so you need to register to get the, the link and to get the notebook and to get uh, reminders and to get the replays. So um, please, please register. Please just join us. People seem to really enjoy and get a lot out of the workshop, so uh, I hope you'll join us. Sharon, change happens if we remain open to the possibilities. I love that. I love that. Yes, it's, it's opening, and, and that, of course, that alone is, is a version of, of change, 
But then what I'm hearing you say, which I love, is that um, remaining open, that new possibilities can come that we can embrace, that we didn't even have to work at, we didn't have to do anything, we didn't have to change anything to receive the possibilities for something different. That's great. Thanks, Sharon. All right. Thank you for being here, and um, I'll see you again next week. Bye.